Welcome to our lecture online. Here's an interesting problem and the solution may not be quite what you think it is. So what we have here is we have a very long beam. The length is 24 meters. At the very end of the beam, there's a small weight attached to it, which has a weight of 3,675 newtons. It's made out of lead and it's small enough so we can ignore the volume. The weight of the beam is double that, 7,350 newtons and half of the beam is submerged. It is water, and the density of water, of course, is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Now, what we're trying to find in this case, this is part one of the problem, we're trying to find the volume of the beam. So, naturally, you will think of the buoyancy force, right? The buoyancy force is going to be pulling up, so let's take a look at all the forces acting on this beam right here. We have, of course, the weight of the lead, would be the mg of the lead and then we have from the center mass we have the mg of the beam and then we have the buoyancy force now the buoyancy force is going to be pushing up and we can assume that the buoyancy force is going to act at the center of mass of the volume of the beam that's below the surface so it's going to act at the halfway point between here and here and that's going to be the buoyancy force. And of course, the buoyancy force is going to be equal to the weight of the displaced liquid. So let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at the buoyancy force. So the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the liquid, which is equal to the mg of the liquid, which is equal to the density times the volume of the submerged portion of the beam, which is the displaced liquid, times g. Now, this is the density of the liquid and the volume of the displaced liquid. So, think about that. The density of the liquid, well, that's equal to 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And G is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we have the volume of the, of the liquid, which is half the volume of the beam. So, the volume of the beam divided by 2. Okay, so what is the buoyancy force? Well, the buoyancy force can also be expressed as being equal to the two weights right here minus the tension because we have to take into account all the forces. So we can say that the buoyancy force is going to be equal to the weight of the lead, which is given, uh, plus the weight of the beam, which is given, minus the tension, which is not given. So here we have the buoyancy force, which is equal to the volume of the beam divided by 2 times 9800. And so we can say that the buoyancy force is equal to, uh, well, the volume of the beam is going to be in cubic meters, and the buoyancy force is going to be in newtons, so that's going to be 9800 divided by 2. Well, I might as well go ahead and divide by 2 which is going to be 4,900 4, newtons per cubic meter times volume of the beam. So in that respect, we have the buoyancy force in terms of the volume of the beam, and here we have the buoyancy force in terms of the tension. Now, of course, we know the weight of the lead, and we know the weight of the beam, so if we combine those two, that would be a 10,000... Uh, 11,025, I believe. Let's see here. 7350 times 1.5. Yeah, 11,025. So we can say the buoyancy force is equal to 11,000. I'm missing a zero. 11,025 newtons minus the tension. And so we have the buoyancy force in terms of the tension and the buoyancy force in terms of the volume of the beam. But there's no way for us, at least in this way, to calculate either the volume of the beam or the tension in the string. And after all, we're trying to find the volume of the beam. So we need to eliminate one of the unknowns. We need to eliminate the tension. So what we could do is we could use torques, because if we find a torque about point A, then the only three forces we care about is the weight of the lead, the weight of the beam, and the buoyancy force. And that will then only be in terms of the volume of the beam and then when we set all the sum of the torques equal to zero, we can then find the volume of the beam, and that's what we're after. So we have to use torques instead, which means we're going to need to find the distances. 
So we need to find the distance to the first force, let's call that distance 1. We need to find the distance to the second force, let's call that distance 2. And we need to find the force to the buoyancy, I mean the distance to the buoyancy, which is distance 3. So we have three distances, and uh, hmm, how do we find that? Well, we have the length of the beam, we have an angle right here, let's call the angle theta. And so that would be the cosine of theta times the length of each of those. So I think we're now able to come up with an equation to give us the torque. Use black here. So we can start with the sum of all the torques add up to zero. Let's see what all the torques are. We have the weight of the lead, which gives us a hmm, counterclockwise direction. That means a positive torque. So that would be equal to mg of the lead times the length of the beam times the cosine of the angle theta. That would be the length of the beam times the cosine of theta. Plus, we have the weight of the beam times, well, that would be the weight of the beam would act to its center mass, which is the halfway point. So it would be L over 2 times the cosine of theta. And then the last one would be the buoyancy force, so it would be minus the buoyancy force, which is the force in the opposite direction, times 3 quarters the length, times 3 quarters the length, times the cosine of theta. All right, and all that should add up to zero. Now notice that all of them have an L, and all of them have a cosine of theta, so we can at least eliminate those, so the L's can cancel out and the cosine of theta can cancel out. So let's rewrite the equation without that. We can then say that 0 equals the mg of the lead plus 1 half the mg of the beam minus 3 quarters the buoyancy force. All right. Now notice that we have an equation for the buoyancy force in terms of the volume of the beam, which is what we're looking for. So let's plug in the numbers. So 0 equals the weight of the lead, which is 3,675 newtons, plus half the weight of the beam, which is 7,350 newtons, minus 3 quarters times the buoyancy force, which is 4,900 newtons per cubic meter times the volume of the beam. Now simplifying that just a little bit more. We can combine these two so that 0 is equal to this plus this. That gives us 7,350 newtons minus 3 quarters of 4,900. I suspect that's probably the same number. Let's see, 4,900 divided by 4 times 3 equals, okay, that would be uh, minus 3,675 newtons per cubic meter times the volume of the beam. And finally, we can say that the volume of the beam is equal to minus 7,350 newtons divided by 3,675 newtons per cubic meter, or the volume of the beam is equal to 2 cubic meters. There we go. And so you find that we couldn't solve the problem using the buoyancy force concept, but we could solve the problem using the sum of all the torques, of course, also being able to calculate the buoyancy force in terms of the volume of the beam, and that is how that's done. Is that the entire beam or submerged beam? The entire beam. Because we took into account that only half the beam was submerged.